The Sunday morning news lineup is moving to 6 a.m. September 22nd. Eyewitness News, the Chicago area's number one news, with John Drury, Diane Burns, Jerry Taft, and Mark G. and Greco. Good evening. Hurricane Fran is now a tropical depression, but it's still causing big problems tonight. A state of emergency in the foothills of the Appalachians tonight, where flash floods are wiping out homes and roads. As many as 10 inches of rain have fallen. And in Virginia, the storm has caused the largest power outage in the state's history. Small rivers have swelled, and rescue workers are using boats to evacuate families trapped by the raging waters. Along the Carolina coast, the full extent of the damage from, the, from Fran is evidence from the air. Mile after mile, homes are demolished. At Topsail Beach, houses were simply dissolved by the storm surge. It rose, rose as high as 12 feet, and it turned roofs, walls, lumber, boats, and other debris into a mixed-up mess. It's all water and wind and uh, boats floating around. I feel like we were fortunate to... Uh just to make it through. I'll never stay here on the island again, ever again. That's it. I'm done. Tonight, many still haven't returned to their homes. A hundred miles inland, there is heavy flooding at Fayetteville, and at Raleigh, hurricane winds toppled a church steeple that stood for 130 years. Wilmington resident Dave Signati caught Fran's arrival on his home video. As the storm bore down, he recorded it all. This will probably be the last time that I come out and take a daytime picture. It's getting really nasty. For about four more hours, Fran howled her worst. Then at sunrise, an unusual sight, an old lobster boat, the Hurricane Rock, had come to rest in the family's front yard. Tonight, the storm is blamed for 17 deaths, Diane. And John, the full picture of the damage won't come into focus for a few more days now. But here's what we know right now. Hundreds of thousands of people are still without electricity tonight in the eastern part of North Carolina. The National Guard is threatening to arrest anybody who goes into evacuated areas. Insurance companies say the damage will total at least $625 million. And federal help is on the way as the president declares North Carolina a disaster area. Well, President Clinton is dispatching some of his top cabinet members to the hardest hit areas. He went to the National Baptist Convention asking for prayers for the victims of Hurricane Fran. Even as we are here, we're going to do everything we can to help the people of North Carolina and South Carolina in this difficult time. But again, I say to you, here in Florida, those of you who went through Hurricane Andrew know what it's like. We need to be praying for those people and supporting them. The hurricane is also causing travel problems. Channel 7's Bob Petty talked to travelers returning to O'Hare Airport tonight. At O'Hare Airport, some flights to and from North Carolina were canceled or delayed. The resulting ripple effects caused other delays and cancellations stretching from New York to California. High winds and other weather-related concerns made normal air traffic impossible. Pretty hectic at the airport. A lot of people were trying to get out, and uh, only one United, actually uh, two United flights got out uh, today. Passengers arriving here in Chicago from Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, landed with a sigh of relief. And I've never seen so many trees on the freeways and roads, and cars abandoned, and high lines down. It was just incredible. Poles were down, lines knocked over, trees. I actually had a tree on my rental car, so. With their feet finally on the ground, passengers arriving here from North Carolina, whether they were passing through or finally at home, seemed happy to leave the wake of Hurricane Fran behind. Bob Petty, Channel 7 News. Well, tonight on Nightline, how one battered North Carolina town is pulling together to weather the storm. That's immediately after our newscast. Diane, in the southwest suburbs tonight, a robbery suspect is dead after a shootout with police. Bolingbrook police say the suspect posed as a telephone repairman and robbed the currency exchange. But police arrived on the scene as he tried to escape. Police say the robber fired a shot at them. They returned the fire, killing the suspect. His identity has not been released. Nobody else was hurt. A daring armored car robbery on Chicago's south side. A lone gunman escapes with more than a half a million dollars. Police say the robber is struck just after guards for the United Security Company had made a cash pickup at a nearby Mecca station. The suspect beat one of the guards and handcuffed the other one to the steering wheel. Both guards are okay, but the robber got away. 
A Chicago restaurant owner is kidnapped and beaten. Tonight, one suspect is in custody and police are hunting for four others. 41-year-old Miguel Regulus was kidnapped near a discount food store. His kidnappers demanded ransom but didn't get it. Regulus was tortured for two days, then shot in the foot before being released. He owns a Mexican restaurant. His daughter told our Paul Meinke the family received several ransom hey, calls. See our father, they just wanted um, $75,000. And if we didn't give it to them, they were going to kill him. Regulus is in fair condition with burns and broken bones in his foot. 31-year-old Antonio Rodriguez is charged with kidnapping. Police say that Rodriguez and the other four suspects thought that Regulus was a drug dealer. Diane? John, police tonight say they busted a scheme to sell stolen eyeglasses. These are some of the frames recovered during a raid on a Pearl Vision store at Western and Howard. And police say the frames were stolen. 25-year-old Jeffrey Lowry is accused of selling the glasses to franchise owner Gabriel Brzezinski. Lowry is charged with robbing seven Chicago optical stores since May. Brzezinski is charged with possession of stolen property. Well, Mixfield is one step closer to becoming a park. The city council's zoning committee has approved a plan to turn the airport into a lakefront park. Mayor Daley likes that idea. Governor Edgar does not. The mayor is likely to get his way, though, when the full city council votes next week. And if that happens, Governor Edgar is already threatening to go to court to keep NICS open. Playing where there's smoke, there's fire, and there's plenty of people fired up tonight over a plan to stop cigarette smoking in the restrooms at Naperville Central High School. School authorities say the smoking problem has become very serious, so they're locking six of the 13 public restrooms. The school says it's enforcing new state and federal laws prohibiting smoking on school grounds, but many students don't like it. I think it's pathetic how people need to smoke all the time in school when they shouldn't be anyway. I think it's pretty sad how when you have to go to the bathroom and you do walk in there, you get sick from smelling all that smoke and it's just, it's uncalled for. Well, I think it's too bad that students are having a hard time getting to bathrooms when they need to be because we do have very limited time for our passing period. Students could face expulsion after repeated violations of the smoking rules. When we come back here, word that O.J. Simpson already knew the verdict before it was announced. A surprising new claim tonight. Also, a Marine helicopter assigned to the president's trip crashes in Florida. And on the health beat, how your office copy machine could lead to a serious disease. All still ahead. Dog auditions. Do your bit for kibbles and bits. Take one. Kibbles and bits? How many give me some kibbles and bits? Next. Very, very good. Hello? I'm gonna get me some... What was it again? It's Kibbles and Bits. What bit does your dog do for Kibbles and Bits? Send us your video along with the entry form from a bag and your dog could star in a Kibbles and Bits commercial. What bit does your dog do? I'm gonna get me some Kibbles and Bits! Or for a Do Your Bit audition, bring your dog in an entry form to Chicago's Navy Pier this Saturday. Sponsored in part by Dominic's. It was born 70 years ago and started growing, moving from state to state. Now it's here. And you have no choice but to run to New York Carpet World's 70th anniversary sale. With selection so incredible, prices so earth-stopping, savings so out of this world, you won't believe your eyes. It's amazing. And so are the prices. New York Carpet World's 70th anniversary sale. Your world may never be the same again. More than Ford owners love their Tauruses. More than Nissan owners love their Maximas. More than anyone else in the class loves their cars. That's how much Dodge owners love their Intrepids. Dodge Intrepid, number one in Strategic Vision's 1996 Total Quality Index in class. Intrepid, this changes everything. Tonight, the writer of a new book on the Simpson murder trial says O.J. Simpson faked a look of relief when he heard the verdict. The writer says Simpson already knew what the jurors decided. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of... Jeffrey Tubin covered the trial for New Yorker magazine. He claims in his new book, a jail guard tipped off Simpson about the verdict. The guard reportedly heard it from a deputy assigned to protect the jury. Tubin says after they reached a verdict, the juries went back to their hotel and had a party. The book also claims attorneys Johnny Cochran and Robert Shapiro both thought Simpson was guilty. Cochran denies it. Shapiro is not commenting. 
More troubles for Dick Morris tonight. He's the former political advisor to President Clinton. Supermarket tabloids are reporting that Morris has a longtime mistress and is the father of her six-year-old daughter. Morris resigned last week as President Clinton's top strategist after the story of his year-long affair with a $200 a night call girl hit the tabloids. It's now learned that Morris has been having another affair 15 years with a Texas woman who's the mother of his only child. Morris has been married to Connecticut lawyer Eileen McGann for 20 years. No comment from Morris tonight. Tonight, President Clinton orders a thorough review of all aircraft serving the White House and Cabinet agencies. The order follows another crash. This time, a military helicopter assigned to the President's trip to Florida crashes with six people on board. Amazingly, no one was hurt. The helicopter is the type used to carry reporters who travel with the President. Just last month, a cargo plane assigned to the presidential detail crashed in Wyoming. Well, John, some positive signs and a tense column in northern Iraq tonight. Rival Kurdish factions held their fire in the northern region of that country. No fighting, in fact, is reported anywhere there. For the first time in almost a week, the U.S. and its allies plan to continue patrols over the no-fly zones in Iraq. Well, Pope John Paul II takes his first foreign trip since he got sick last month. The Pope is visiting Hungary tonight. It's a two-day trip and includes a visit to a thousand-year-old Benedictine monastery. Still ahead, meteorologist Jerry Taff with the weekend forecast, and we'll have pictures of the first snow no. this season. Yes, snow. Also coming up, a unique circus comes to town tonight, plus good wine, great food. James Ward uncovers some terrific restaurant bargains for the fall. How you can enjoy the real deals just ahead. Tim Cup is a wonderful new romantic comedy. Yes! Kevin Costner and Rene Russo are sensational together. I find him mildly attractive when he's obnoxious and arrogant like this. Tim Cup, rated R, now playing at a theater near you. Welcome to an Ameritech test town, where people help us refine our communications products and services. Jimmy, I think you're going to have to take it back. Sometimes it's way in the future. Okay, I see the problem. I thought a spark plug wire was arguing. No, you got a bad ring in the number three cylinder. That's why you're losing power. Sometimes it's available now, like our new home security system from Security Link that makes your life a little safer without making it more complicated. Or Americast, our cable TV service that's remarkably advanced. What's your brother doing? He's making a new menu. Yet simple enough that anyone can use it. Why do we test stuff in our test towns? Because the way we see it, technology doesn't work until it works for people. Ameritech, your link to better communication. It's your four dealers model year end sales drive in progress. Now's the best time of the year to save on a huge selection of 96 Escorts. Get $19.55 in total savings on an Escort 3-door. With all these great standard features like dual airbags and over $1,900 in savings, America's best-selling small car gives you more value. See your favorite Ford dealer today. While selection is best, and don't let the savings get away from you! Across the continent, Remax Associates average more experience and more sales per agent. So, if you're looking for results, look for Remax out in front. On the Health Beat tonight, your office copy machine and a link to a dangerous disease. Researchers in Austria say they found a link between photocopiers and lung disease. Scientists at the University of Vienna are reporting the case of a man who developed lung problems from the tiny metal particles found in the toner used in photocopiers. The 39-year-old man did not smoke, but he suffered a persistent dry cough for a year. The scientists are concerned this problem will grow as the use of photocopiers increases. And millions of people take multivitamins, hoping to protect against all kinds of diseases. But researchers say the once-a-day supplements don't seem to protect against the top two killers, cancer and heart disease. Researchers with the American Cancer Society and the CDC found that users of multivitamins are just as likely as anyone else to suffer from heart attacks and stroke. Doctors say that dosages in multivitamins may be too small.
Oh, yeah. Well, John, the circus is coming to town. Not Barnum and Bailey, but the Universal Big Top Circus, the first African-American circus in the nation. The circus is performing at 52nd and Cottage Grove for two weeks. It features trapeze artists, the newsroom favorite contortionists, wild animals, and much more. Many of the acts have biblical themes. It's wonderful. It's absolutely amazing. This is the best circus I've ever been to. It's great. I love it. I love it. There should be more days like this. Man, it's great. It's really wonderful. I think everybody should come see it. We'll have to. And there are also Urban X, uh, too, in this uh, show. The Universal Big Top Circus is in town until September 22nd. Well, Labor Day is come and gone, and food critic James Ward is here to rush the fall season a bit with some big bargains for your autumn appetite, James. Diane and John, I am not giving up on summer yet, but there is a certain cool sound in the air, the cool sound of money. Money being saved. And here are a couple of places to cash in. Every day from 5 to 7 p.m., the Park Avenue Cafe at 199 East Walton offers an extraordinary buy in its two bars, downstairs and upstairs, which is more fun. For 12 bucks and 50 cents, you can enjoy unlimited quantities of seven high-quality French and California wines, including a dry Schwamsburg bubbly, a fruity but crisp Tokay Pinot Gris, and a super Rutherford Hill Cabernet Sauvignon, all good years. To complement the vino, there's a variety of hors d'oeuvres prepared by talented chef John Hogan. In all, there are four different plates of these tasty little nibbles, quite a buy for $12.50. If you were to have one glass of each of these seven wines at regular prices, it would cost you $62.75, excluding hors d'oeuvres. Call 312-944-4414 for all information on this big wine deal at the Park Avenue Cafe. And now, a big meal deal. The venue is Vinci. At Halsted & Willow, Chef Paul LaDuca's lively country Italian restaurant now celebrating its fifth anniversary with a special bargain meal, five courses for just $15 through September 15th. Begin with grilled polenta and three mushrooms, including portobello. Next, there's a neat romaine salad, followed by linguine della nona with roasted veggies and garlic bread crumbs. I love it. Entrees? Chef Le Duke is offering a choice. Either marinated Cornish hen grilled under a hot brick or grilled duck breast with rabi and roasted onions. And for dessert, Zucato, a chocolate dome cake with raspberry sauce and pistachios. And if you were to have this meal at regular menu prices, it would cost $39, so better hurry in by September 15th. Call Vinci at 312-266-1199 for all information and reservations. What a buy. And here's more good news. The very classy and usually expensive Spiaggia restaurant at One Mag Mile, Michigan and Oak has extended its Democratic Convention lunch deal, three courses for $19.96 until the end of the year. And shall talk for now, John and Diane and... Jerry. Imagine all the money you could save, though, if you went to McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King. Well, yes, John, I'll, I'll get my little calculator would you, out. And, uh, would you work it out? I'll add up the cows and the fat and uh, whatever. And you have the choice of wine. No, no, no. I wouldn't have a problem with red wine. If, and a paper if cup. Just, uh, I'll uh, check it out. It just doesn't make it. I'll check it out. I'll be the kind that had to screw up tough. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Anyway. <laughs> and Jerry's got some great weather for us tonight, I know. Yeah, actually it looks pretty good for us over the weekend. We could see a couple of showers late Sunday, but other than that, uh, things look pretty good. We got that nice cool breeze today off the lake, so it certainly felt a little bit better around here, but certainly not out east. Fran is no longer a hurricane, no longer a tropical storm, just a tropical depression, a big low pressure area, and you can see the storm over the last eight to twelve hours actually drawing Atlantic moisture all the way into Chicago. Some of the clouds that we have over us now are associated with this particular storm. Still some heavy rains falling in Pennsylvania over into Ohio. Parts of uh, Virginia earlier today had eight to ten inches of rain. So it continues to be very wet out there and that'll move into western New York later tonight and tomorrow. 
Our high temperature today, 83, 5 degrees above the normal high of 78. And it's still 73 at O'Hare, 76 at the Lake, 75 Midway, 69 Joliet, 72 Lyle, the wind north at 7, and the humidity high at 97%. Radar shows all of the rain shield across a good portion of Ohio. They're getting some heavy rains there. There were a few scattered light showers in Indiana, but uh, didn't quite reach the Chicago area. We had a couple of sprinkles to the south, and that's about it. But we do have an approaching cold front out to the west, so over the weekend, as this storm weakens and moves to the northeast, that will allow this cold front to move through Chicago. And there are a few showers associated with that, so we could see some of those move through the area on Sunday. But during the day tomorrow, we'll take this particular storm and move it to the northeast. We'll move the cold front a little bit closer to us out to the west, but notice we're in between rain areas, so generally speaking, it should be a pretty nice day tomorrow. We'll have a few more clouds, and temperatures once again will be in the low 80s. Our high today was 83, 87 in St. Louis, only 60 in Denver. They had uh, quite a bit of rain throughout the day, and they had some snow in the higher elevations. I'll show you that in a second. Temperatures tomorrow for us, low 80s. After that, it will turn a little bit cooler. Tonight, partly cloudy and mild. Overnight lows, 70 in the city, 65 inland. Tomorrow, hazy sunshine, warm. High tomorrow, 82. Again, a little bit cooler near the lake. Then 78, partly sunny on Sunday. Chance for a shower or thunderstorm late in the day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, nice dry air with temperatures between 75 and 80. One final note, we mentioned snow. This is it. This is the first substantial snowfall of the season in Mount Evans in Colorado. It's not even autumn yet, and they got some pretty heavy snows out there. Actually, the road to Mount Evans is closed, <clears throat> so it won't be long. We weren't going there. Actually, I checked the calendar today. It's 110 days till Christmas. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. To start saving already. You know? <laughs> Jerry, are you testing those lights yet? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't work last year. <laughs> well, after a break, tonight's Illinois lottery results, including the big game. Later, up, up, and away, a colorful competition. And I'm Archie and Greco coming up in sports. The Red Sox taking some pot shots at the good guys. Stay with us. Hi. Doesn't it make you feel better knowing that Columbia is more than just a hospital? Sure. That they have so many ways of making you healthy. <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah. making it easier to get your, your blood pressure or cholesterol checked. <laughs> it's okay. I, nobody's judging you. For the nearest Columbia facility, call 1-800-COLUMBIA. 100. 200. The 1996 Special Edition DeVille is more than one beautiful luxury car, it's one beautiful bargain. The Special Edition DeVille comes complete with $2,500 worth of extras at no extra cost. Then add a huge $3,000 in factory-to-dealer incentives, and you can save up to $5,500. It amounts to one opportunity you won't want to let slip through your fingers. $5,500. Find savings and value everywhere you look at Jewel Osco. Because we're working together to serve you better. Save on frozen country pride boneless skinless chicken breast fillets, $7.99 a box with preferred card. Or on RC Diet Writer Crush, $3.99 a case with preferred card. And don't miss our 10 cent sale. One tin dime gets you your choice of values. Love is lovelier the second time around. Presenting certified pre-owned Cadillacs. Fully inspected with extended factory warranties and Cadillac owner privileges. It's an affordable way to put Cadillac luxury in your life. Certified pre-owned Cadillacs. I'm very glad we met the second time. See your Chicago land and Northwest Indiana Cadillac dealers. I'm Forrest Sawyer, coming up on Nightline, battered and bruised from Hurricane Fran, one North Carolina town already hurting is pushed to the edge, weathering the storm tonight. This sports segment is brought to you by Dodge. Dodge welcomes you to visit the friendly dealer near you to see the 96 lineup of Dodge cars and trucks.
get the big game. That's right. Big game. <laughs> They're all big. Yeah. <laughs> They're all big for the They're all big. Now, you know, baseball could actually start to get exciting. Really? There is a chance. Not much of a chance. <laughs> There's a slight chance it might actually get interesting. The uh, Red Sox slipped into town tonight and quickly silenced the White Sox to open a big weekend wild card series. It was Dead Sea Scrolls night at Comiskey, and this one was over early. Boston got five in the second inning off Wilson Alvarez. Bill Hasselman gets one through here. That scores Rudy Pemberton, and they're on their way. It's 3 nothing. Jeff Fry follows, doubling down the line. That scores Hasselman, who has to chug all the way around from first. Mo Vaughn wound up going four for five of the night. The Sox lose 10-3. to three. Boston now just two and a half behind the Sox for the wild card. The O's are one back. They're still playing Detroit. Cubs in Philly. Hey! Look, that's me. Here I am. All right. Second inning. Cubs took the lead. Ryan Sandberg's solo home run to left, his 23rd. They gave the Cubs a 2-1 edge. The Phillies went up 4-2, but they blew it as they fouled up this double play. They throw it away because there's nobody at first. <laughs> that ties it at four with Timmons and Grace scoring. And then in the ninth inning, Ozzie returns to ice it with a blast to left, his fourth of the year. The Cubs come back to win this one by a final of 6-4. And a great L.A. story tonight. Brett Butler returns to the starting lineup for the Dodgers just four and a half months after being diagnosed with throat cancer. A remarkable comeback from delicate surgery, all that rehab. He gets the tremendous standing O. And I'll tell you what, this is the loudest cheer you'll ever hear for a ground out. The Dodgers and the Pirates in the early going. Way to go, Mr. Butler. Well, he's the seven-footer without an expiration date, and he might be headed for Chicago. Our sister station in Boston is reporting that 43-year-old Robert Perry could sign with the Bulls as early as tomorrow. And the Bears are all set to head to Washington to take on the Skins on Sunday. Lonzo Spellman says there will be no emotional letdown on defense following that big performance against Dallas in the opener. We have no time to be relaxed, take anybody easy. Uh, you know, we're going to go out with the same attitude we came out against the um, Cowboys and the same amount of fire, the same amount of emotion, and, uh, and get the job done. All right, plenty of college football here on Channel 7 tomorrow. Brad Palmer is covering Northwestern at Wake Forest. The ABC doubleheader features Illinois and USC right after Nebraska-Michigan State. And U.S. Open tennis, this couple watching the Conchita Martinez-Monica Sellers match. She wants to watch. He wants to talk. She says shut up, and he had to go sit in the car. Meanwhile, Monica was in control on the court. Great match point right here. And Sellers puts Conchita away, winning 6-4, 6-3. The graf Hingis match was postponed due to heavy rain. In golf, second round of the Canadian Open, Tiger Woods on the beach on number nine, out of the sand with a five iron, and right into the water for the bogey. He's four under for the tournament, which doesn't sound too bad, but he's 11 shots behind your leader, Scott Dunlap, who birdied the par five 18th here with a little help from this great approach. Dunlap 15 under after two in Ontario. World Cup Hockey, Russia eliminates Finland tonight up in Ontario as well. Here they come. Andre Nikolishin with some great foot and stick work. And Russia advances to the quarterfinals with a 5-0 route. And finally, did you see this one? A jockey gets a little distracted taking his horse down the stretch because a bunch of deer have jumped onto the track. And one of them decides he wants off in a hurry. <laughs> Look out. Get out of the way because Bambi has become Bam Bam. Oh, that's something. That was a, Bambi's a fullback. You know, that animated lawn furniture. You got to watch out. Uh, and they're so cute. Yeah. But painful. There's more to come tonight. A clear blue sky is the perfect backdrop for a huge balloon extravaganza. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dodge Ram has won a lot of awards from a lot of experts, from a lot of magazines. But according to a survey of new vehicle owners by Strategic Vision, Ram is also winner of the Total Quality Award for Best Owner Experience in its class for the second year in a row. An award from the most important truck experts of all, the people who make the payments. Dodge Ram, the rules have changed. It figures that Sarah would catch the flu at kindergarten the moment her mom left the office. Ah, but there's a remedy. Mom has MCI-1. The nurse just dials one number, and like magic, that one call goes to mom's office, then her cell phone, and right to her pager. Excuse me, I've got to make a call. Mom to the rescue. She may be out, but she's never out of touch. MCI-1. Life just got simpler.
They come in all shapes and sizes to Reno, Nevada, and at first light today, it was first flight. The 15th annual Great Reno Balloon Race is off to a spectacular start. It's one of the most colorful, lighter-than-air competitions in the country, and there are some special hot air balloons floating through the sky. Some are shaped like giant trucks. There was an ever-popular hamburger, as well as a bottle of champagne. And by the way, should two of the craft touch, it's no big deal. They just call it. A kiss. They are very pretty. Aren't they? Well, that's our report for tonight. Nightline is next here on Channel 7. I'm John Drury. And I'm Diane Burns. Thank you for joining us. For Margie and Greco, Jerry Taft, and the entire Channel 7 News team, good night. Closed captioning of this newscast is brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northern Indiana GMC truck dealers. It's finally set the record straight about Congressman Durbin. Mary, lights, Roy, turn around. Durbin's wasted so much of our money that the Citizens Against Government Waste described him as hostile towards families. To pay for his liberal programs, Durbin voted for the biggest tax increase in history. Durbin even voted to raise taxes on Social Security benefits. Now, here's the kicker. Ow! Sorry. Durbin also voted to raise something else. His pay by 30,000 big ones. After Durbin's been a big tax and big spend and pay grabbing liberal congressman, why would we ever make him our senator? The tobacco companies want our kids to think smoking is cool. But this man is fighting back. Congressman Dick Durbin. He's the number one enemy of the tobacco industry. Dick Durbin led the successful fight to ban smoking on airplanes. And now he's cracking down on the illegal sale of cigarettes to our kids. Why does Dick Durbin take on the tobacco giants? Well, lots of small reasons come to mind. Dick Durbin for the United States Senate. When conditions are less than ideal, the Chevy Blazer with the exclusive driver control system helps conquer most driving situations, including the most brutal place on the planet, your wallet. It's the Chevy Blazer model year-end event. Right now, you can get $12.50 cash back on a new 96 Blazer. Or enjoy some great GMAC smart lease offers. Chevy Blazer. After all, a car payment shouldn't be the toughest thing you face. Slow to replace that sluggish old computer. Quit waiting. Get up to speed with an IBM, Apple, or Packard Bell computer at Best Buy. And the only things you'll wait on are payments and interest for a year. Best Buy. Just the store you've been shopping for. Take the Advocate Challenge. Run for fun in Lutheran General Hospital's Good Times Classic September 8th. Call 1-800-3-ADVOCATE for more information. The Sunday morning news lineup is moving to 6 a.m. September 22nd. This is a Nightline Friday night special. It's easy to see just how hard the North Carolina coast was hit by Hurricane Fran. Inland, it's more difficult to understand just how bad it was. The first year of the corn has been a decent price and I guess the last 20 years. And then this happens to us. Despite the preparation, despite all the hard work, the people of Tabor City, North Carolina, are hurting. 
This is a devastating blow to all of us, our community and uh, our county. Going to take a number of years to recover, if we recover. Tonight, weathering the storm, one town pulls together.